Just like having the right information is necessary to make solid hiring and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. Datafax is proud to support the positives and be a presenting sponsor of The Spark. Since 1964, Memphis Theological Seminary has worked to equip men and women of all races and faiths with the spark to do ministry for the real world. We're grateful to serve our community and proud to support WKNO. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance has been serving the Mid-South since 1954. We've always focused on supporting our community and believe in promoting the positives, encouraging engagement, and leading by example. Lipscomb and Pitts is proud to be a presenting sponsor of The Spark. Additional funding for The Spark is provided by Christian Brothers University, by Meriton, by YX Genomics, and by Serves. This month on The Spark, our theme is Service to Our Country, Service for Our Families. We'll learn more about an organization providing support for our nation's combat wounded heroes and Gold Star families, a nonprofit training service dogs for placement with veterans and people with autism and diabetes, and a company redefining the service industry with a full service concierge experience covering everything from running errands to transportation and home maintenance. We'll also share a special moment from our Spark Awards 2015. Have you ever been excited by a new idea? inspired by watching someone lead by example? When we talk about creating change, we start by sharing the stories of everyday heroes who are making a difference in their own way so we can learn and do the same. This truth is the power behind this show, which is focused on business and community leaders that are leading by example to give back, fuel change, and create new opportunities for the Mid-South. I'm Jeremy Park, and this is The Spark. They're an organization providing support for our combat wounded veterans and also Gold Star families. I'm here with Dave Liskey, who's with Military Warrior Support Foundation. You're the Vice President of Donor and Community Outreach. The organization is national, but you have a very yes. heavy presence right here in Memphis. Founded by General Leroy Sisko. I'll leave it there. You tell us yeah. a little bit of the history for Military Warrior Support Foundation. Well, I appreciate that. Great to be with you and uh, uh, great to be here with the Spark. Um, it's been a great Great venture over the last uh, few years. Uh, Military Warrior Support Foundation was founded in 2006, as you said, by uh, General Leroy Sisko. And it's just been an incredible opportunity to be able to come alongside our wounded heroes. And that really is, Jeremy, our mission, is to help combat wounded heroes transition from the military back into civilian life. And we get to do that in a number of different ways. But I tell you what, it, 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 that issue of transition is so important. Right. Um, you speak to the wives, you speak to even the husbands and uh, the children, and the transition piece is the most difficult. And so being able to come alongside our wounded heroes across the country and absolutely here in Memphis has just been a huge opportunity and uh, a huge blessing. And so monumentally important, when you come alongside them, you mm -hmm. do a lot of really amazing things. One that gets a lot of press, and that's right. a mortgage-free right. home. We'll talk about that in that's a second. Right. But beyond that, there's a lot more to this. So do yeah. a deep dive on just some of the programs, especially the mentorship component of this. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got a number of different programs that really focus on uh, uh, helping them get back on their feet in that transition period. One of them certainly is our Skills for Life program. This is an incredible opportunity that we have with our heroes and Gold Star children to be able to take them. And it really is a, a form of mentoring because we're taking them hunting and fishing and golfing trips and being able to spend time with them and getting them out of that environment that they're so used to which can be a very tough environment. And so the, the Skills for Life program has just become a incredible opportunity for us to be able to give back. And then, yes, as you mentioned, we'll, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the, the Homes for Wounded Heroes, but we also have an incredible program called the Apartment for Heroes program, which is similar to the Homes for Heroes, but this is a, a little bit step down from the standpoint of uh, heroes just wanting some time for a year, sometimes two years, to find that transition piece of, uh, of being able to get into an apartment. And then uh, a, another great program that we have is CEOs for Heroes. And that is an opportunity for us to come alongside heroes and spouses and be able to help them with employment and job opportunities. And that has been significant because at the end of the day, 
we, we take care of housing, we take care of transportation as well with our transportation uh, for heroes program. But then there's that piece with the job opportunities, which is just so critical. Absolutely. The skills that these men and women bring back home are incredible because at the end of the day, they're leaders in just about every capacity and to be able to help um, with employers to, to put them well, together. Well, connecting the pieces. I mean, if, if they come back and they don't see opportunities for themselves, that's an right. even harder transition. But if they yeah. have something that's productive that they can jump into that's gainful employment Absolutely. and they feel it's meaningful, well, then all yeah. of a sudden that transition becomes you know a lot more smooth. And to your point, not only with that, but all of a sudden they have financial help and advice. They also right. have the mentoring component. They get to go on some vacations that get them yeah. out of that environment. But then also you have the home piece of this as well. That's so right. talk about these mortgage-free homes. I mean, we've had the opportunity to give one away here in Memphis, just yeah. even as yeah. our organization. Um, I've seen them. I mean, these are huge concerts you right. do them at, football right. games with the University yeah. of Memphis Tigers. But, you know, beyond the show piece of this, what you're doing is you're transforming not only their life, right. but future generations because of their kids. So talk about the importance of these mortgage-free homes. Well, this is obviously the cornerstone of, of what we do. Um, and we believe that housing is such a huge aspect of helping with that transition. So you're right, so our Homes for Wounded Heroes uh, program has been around since two, 2010. And in, in a nutshell, what we do is we help um, mortgage, we, we help actually wounded heroes with providing them a mortgage-free home. Year to date, we've done 720 uh, mortgage-free homes across the country. It's a big number. Yeah, yeah. This is millions of dollars in terms of value and impact to be able to save these uh, these wounded heroes that mortgage. Yeah, we've been able to partner with some incredible financial institutions, and it really has come out to to be over two hundred million dollars in wow. mortgage-free homes that we've been able to donate and give back to our heroes. We've got uh, well over ten uh, families here in the in the mid south area that uh, you've, you've been part of, and uh, uh, we've been able to partner with the University of Memphis. We also have a golf tournament here that we do, uh, uh, the Homes for Wounded Heroes Golf Tournament out at Memphis National. That's been significant. But I tell you what, what really is the cornerstone to what we do is the mentoring piece with these heroes because, yeah, it's great that we get to give them a mortgage-free home and help them with jobs and, and everything that we do, but the one thing that we did not want to do is set them up to fail. And so when we started this program, we said that um, it's not enough to be able to just give them a home. We need to walk with them for three years. And so that's what we do. So all of our heroes go through a three-year family and financial mentoring program. Each one of them meets with a uh, family counselor uh, each month. And it, the goal is to help them understand the value of the asset when it comes to the home and then reduce personal debt. Many of these men and women are, are, are coming home and, and uh, they're in debt and they're looking for some guidance financially and emotionally on, on how to go about doing that. And so that's one of the, the areas that we've been able to really help our wounded heroes out. In fact, we've been able to help reduce personal debt with all of our heroes nationally by over $14 million. That's huge. Well, make sure and tell viewers where they can learn more. How can they get involved? Obviously, financial contributions is a big part of this. Yeah. But when you talk yeah. about getting involved, following the conversation, where, where do the viewers go? Yeah, absolutely. Please go to militarywarriors.org. That's our national page. Uh, you can see a lot of opportunities there from the standpoint of different programs uh, across the country and nationally. Um, so to your point about being able to help out from a financial standpoint, obviously the, the biggest part for us is being able to uh, have significant donations to be able to continue the programs that, that we take part in. But we also need volunteers. We need people to help out. Um, and you can find all that on militarywarriors.org and, um, and look on, on different opportunities here certainly in the Memphis area and across the country. Well, plenty of ways to give back nationally and right here in the Mid-South. Absolutely. Dave Liskey, greatly appreciate you coming on the show and sharing right. all the great work Military Warrior Support Foundation is doing. Thank you, Jeremy. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. They're a nonprofit training service dogs for placement with veterans and people with autism and diabetes. I'm here with the co-president and founder of Retrieving Freedom Incorporated, Charles Dwyer. 
And we have obviously a very special guest, which is a perfect example of what <laughs> you do. But um, for starters, being the co-founder, being the, the co-president, give us a little bit of history for Retrieving Freedom. Okay. Uh, well, first off, thank you for having us. Uh, it's an incredible honor to, to be asked to be here with you, and I appreciate it very much. Uh, Retrieving Freedom uh, started on a trip back from uh, St. Louis. Um, I had worked for a company called United Rentals, which has a very large presence here in Memphis. We were a construction equipment supply and sales company and rental company. At one of our yearly kickoffs up in St. Louis, we met another organization called the Tower Hope. And what the Tower Hope does is they raise money to fund the production cost of service dogs for veterans, uh, particularly combat injured veterans. I had been previously an amateur dog trainer for competition, uh, training dogs, uh, retrievers uh, for field trials, hunt test type stuff, and had always uh, had a uh, keen interest in service dogs and autism. And after meeting that group that weekend on the way home, I put together the plan to begin Retrieving Freedom. So we shifted gears, we started training some of the skill sets that these dogs are gonna require to help individuals in need, and one thing led to another. It was an incredible leap of faith, and I stepped away from an incredible job of 18 years to begin Retrieving Freedom. You're talking a lot of training, $25,000 to be able right. to train these, these dogs. A service dog, like you said, is $25,000 over the course of two years. A lot of very intensive training. And it's like 85 different commands yeah. and things that they can do, correct? Like opening the washing machine yeah. and getting the mail right. and all sorts of just things that you might think are routine, but those are things to help somebody exactly. like a veteran. And at the same time, though, we don't want the dog to enable a disability. We want the dog to be more in engaged with the recovery program of the veteran so that he, rather than just sending the dog across the, the, the living room to get his cell phone, you know, that's good, but as the veteran improves and we want him and the dog to, to become more of a working team that are dependent upon each other. Right. And we want them to engage. We don't want them to, uh, to stay in, inside. We want them to get out. We want them to reconnect with society and, and, and feel productive and, and useful. And the incredible thing about most of the veterans, well, all of the veterans that we work with, I mean, you know, some of these guys are double, even triple amputees. They get around better than I do. I mean, they're just incredible human beings, and thank God we've got them to protect our freedoms. Absolutely. And um, so it's our responsibility to help them re-engage themselves after being disabled, to let them know that, hey, life's not over, man. We're here for you. If we can use a dog to help substantiate some of that and, uh, and make you feel better, help you get through some of the things that might make you feel vulnerable, let's do that for you. Well, and you provide this to them for free, which is even better. So you're going through the mm -hmm. process right now, a capital campaign to build an 11,000 square foot facility to be able to train more animals. Talk about that. We, we got our nonprofit status in October of 2011. Uh, since then, we've, we've placed 72 dogs. The demand is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we have outgrown our ability to train any more dogs at this time. In fact, at this point, we've placed more dogs this year than we did last year. So I think I have about 40 applications currently in review and have been approved. We're at the point where we need some extra trainers, we need some administrative help, and we need a bigger place to train more dogs. Right now we have 22 dogs in training and uh, about 40 applications. So, and it's a two year process, so we need, we need help. To, to take it to the next level, and we're determined that we're going to get there. And that's where the viewers come in, right? Is, <laughs> Hopefully, is raising yeah. awareness. Well, <laughs> right, so, so right. tell us about Annie. I mean, we have the special guest sitting right here, yeah. who's you know gives you a perfect example <laughs> of just hanging out here. But right. um, you know, describe <clears throat> Annie. Give give us a little bit of a teaser for Annie. Annie is about uh, I think she's 17 months old. Uh, she is a uh, yellow, even though she's very white Labrador Retriever, and she came from a breeder out of Louisiana, Kim Riggins from Bear Creek on the Bayou, who has produced some incredible service puppies that we've actually gone through the process and graduated. But Annie is gonna to go to a Air Force veteran that has suffered some post-traumatic stress issues and some mobility issues. And um, hopefully she's gonna help with some nightmare interruption. Uh, she's gonna be able to refocus some negative energy when, when there's a flashback or there's a, you know, just a bad day when the energy and anxiety gets amped up. She'll be there to say, hey, I'm here for you. Let me help you out, what do you need? She'll provide personal space in front or behind, and um, she'll pick up things that he might drop so that he doesn't bend over and feel vulnerable. So there's a lot, it's, just, it's amazing the things that these dogs can be taught, and each one of them is specially trained for the individual that gets it. Tell viewers how we can get involved. I mean, obviously financial contribution is a part of this to right. be able to help with the capital campaign and everything right. you do to underwrite the cost, but right. what are some other ways that we can help? The biggest thing is foster homes for puppies. 
uh, that is paramount to the long-term success of a dog going through the program and finishing and being placed. Puppy raisers are one of the best assets that we have. Uh, someone that takes a puppy from eight weeks old and raises it till it's six, eight months old, sometimes longer if they're willing to do that. And what that does, it socializes the dog in a one-on-one in -on -one environment, uh, gets them used to all the sights and sounds and the noises. Because these dogs are, have complete public access when they're placed, so they have to be able to you know, interact and be able to handle any situation that a person handles in the course of a day. So that early socialization is key to the long-term success in training and final placement. So tell viewers where they can learn more about Retrieving Freedom, Inc. and how to get involved. Uh, retrievingfreedom.org is our website. We're on Facebook, uh, Retrieving Freedom Incorporated. Give us a like, uh, look at our website. We just launched a brand new one. It's got some really good information in there. There's an application for a puppy raiser um, and, and then other ways to donate. And um, we look forward to hearing from some people. Well, Annie, Charles, thank you for coming on the show. Greatly <laughs> thank you appreciate very much for all you do for making a huge difference in the lives of so many all across our nation right here in the Mid-South. So I appreciate thank you very it. Much. Thank you. Each year, the Spark Awards honors businesses, nonprofits, and individuals doing their part to make the Mid-South a better place. Our most recent winner for nonprofits with budgets between $1 and $5 million is the Exchange Club Family Center of Memphis, with its mission to help families affected by violence and abuse. So at the Exchange Club Family Center, our mission is to interrupt the cycle of family violence. That includes domestic violence among intimate partners and also the risk of child abuse, uh, either children who are abused at the hands of their caretakers or children who witness violence among their, their, their caretakers in the home. Somewhere in the beginning 1900s, there were a group of individuals who got together to exchange ideas. Their focus was to exchange ideas that would help the community, and from that grew the Exchange Club, which is a national organization that's been around for a long time. So the Memphis office of the Exchange Club Family Center began about 30 years ago, and it was a small three-person office down on Elvis Presley Boulevard. And it began with just offering parenting classes because the assumption, of course, is if you can help young parents in raising their children in a safe and secure and nurturing environment, then that goes a long way toward interrupting the possibility of violence being part of children's experience. But what began to happen is that the center was having more and more of the people in the community becoming engaged in the programs. And the question began to be raised, well, what else can we do? Right. Because if you're going to interrupt the cycle of violence, the question is always, well, where do you interrupt? So we began with teaching parents of young children. But then you can also make a case for teaching young children to resolve conflicts in a way that's devoid of violence or aggression. Or maybe you could interrupt with teenagers and teach them about healthy relationships. Well, maybe you can interrupt with the victims of violence so that they can heal some of the traumas that they've been through. Well, maybe you can interrupt with the batterers and help them learn other ways to relate. So basically, what began as one program 30 years ago is now over 20 programs. Wow. We love the relationship we have with the training agencies around town. Um, we have a number of undergraduate interns, and I think for many of them, it's their first experience in a service agency. And who knows how much we have sparked in terms of where those undergraduates go from, from their time with us. But our graduate interns are those who are already involved in uh, master's or doctoral level training in counseling, social work, psychology. And we offer them the opportunity under the direction and supervision of our clinical staff to work with our families and our kids and gain incredible experience in, um, in clinical work in this environment. But it's a very mutual kind of benefit because we love to have our interns there who are constantly asking us questions, coming up with ideas of their own and keeping us on our toes.
They're a company redefining the service industry, a full service concierge experience. I'm here with Ryan McKay, he's the Director of Sales for Level 9 Services. Level 9 Services, founded by two veterans, probably serving our country over in Iraq, that says, hey, I want to bring something special to Memphis. Give us a little bit of a history for Level 9 Services. Right. Um, we started three years ago um, by Chip Libano and Richard Sales. Uh, like you said, we're serving in Iraq together. Um, they came back with an idea of just doing grocery delivery. Just in the meantime, on the weekends, just helping the community doing that way. Um, and it just grew into a full service lifestyle management company over a few years. And it's so hard because you guys do so much. I try to right. tell people all the time, it's like, well, they do transportation. They can pick you up and take you everywhere, and it's an amazing experience. Um, you also have valet parking. You can do errands, like you said, doing groceries. Right. You can do home maintenance. I mean, so you right. pretty much cover a wide spectrum. So when you describe what you do at Level 9 right. Services, give us an idea of what you do. Sure. You know, Level 9, we've, we've come to the fact that we can't do everything. So what we've done is we've gone out and built a vendor network. So that way we can say yes to when a client says, I need bug control, I need a roofer, I need you know, gutter cleaning. So we've created that network to provide all range of services. Um, but basically our core services are driving, valet, errand running, helping hands. And what's really unique about you is over 70% of your team are veterans, or also too, off-duty police officers. So right. you have a really cool public servant side to you um, that I really enjoy, especially from the transportation aspect, because right. you know that the person driving you is gonna take great care of you, right. protect you and keep you safe and all the way, all the way through. But um, talk about that side, is that there's a giving back component to me that's really special on the veterans, the public servant side. Right, you know, Chips you know, and Richard, that was one of their main goals is, because a lot of people that they served with are from Mississippi and the Memphis area. So, you know, a lot of these guys didn't have jobs to come back to. And that was real important to Chip to give back to those guys that he served with and give them opportunities, you know, to work. In, with his company. And talk about, you know, when you look at the other side of giving back, you work a lot with nonprofits. And right. so it's the Children's Museum of Memphis, mm -hmm. it's um, organizations like Memphis Fashion Week. Right. So you do everything from valet, you help bring their events to life. Talk about the interface with nonprofits here. Sure. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a big, you know, part for me. I really enjoy doing that. Um, we have an event planner on staff that we donates a lot of her time to help these parties get started. We do everything from getting all their equipment there, getting all the you know, food and beverage, and then all the way into valet. So we do provide, you know, donate that time just to get them so they can make more money you know, for, for their charity. Well, and that's a big deal. I mean, imagine putting on these huge fundraisers. And when you're talking right. about valet parking, these are very large fundraisers. Yes. And that's a tremendous amount right. of work. And so to be able to help these organizations not only share their stories with so many in the room there, right. but to bring that to life in an experience that's going to help those people right. donate money and be sure. personally attached, right. it's so important for our city. Yes, we, we enjoy it. And it really helps also, you know, with our exposure as well. You know, that's a big part of it as well. We, we just enjoy working with all the local charities. So also we talk about milestones. Over 5,000 is we the just, number so far yeah. of, uh, we'll talk about 5,000. What does 5,000 mean? So it was 5,000 jobs. We've completed 5,000 tasks over the last three years, which is really big for us. This year we've grown almost 120%. Wow. Um, so we're really growing. You know, it's always kind of taking a little bit of time for, for the market to catch on, but the more that we're out there, it's, it's really growing. Well, I was sharing it with a friend before is even for my wife's anniversary, I gave you a theme, a Bon Jovi right. theme, and you created this amazing basket uh, and personally delivered it to her. What's been maybe one or two favorite moments for you that really talk about the level of service, the level of customer experience that you provide with Level 9 Services? Um, you know, it, we've, I, we've not said no yet. Um, to any client, which is a big deal for us. But some of just the, the things that we've done, we got a last minute phone call, can you go pick up my cat that's being flown in from uh, Milwaukee at the airport? And none of us knew what to do, you know, it was, there was no instructions. So, um, you know, it, the level of service that we bring is, is a big deal. Um, and that kind of differs us from everyone else. So how do viewers access Level 9? How do they sign up? How, what's the process for someone to say, hey, I need this done, or I could really use Level 9 services? Right. Where do they begin? Um, just you can go onto our website. Um, you can, it's an interactive website. You can go on and register, become a member. Um, you can also, our number's on the website. You can just give us a call.
And everything, for the most part, is kind of built on this either hourly rate or right. a, a basic. So, I mean, you make it really easy up front on, yes. okay, here's the cost, here's what's going to be. So um, there's not any gray area. Right. There's no f hidden fees or anything like that on transportation like a lot of companies have. So, so tell easy. viewers one more time, you never can say it enough. You right. can show it enough is website, easy ways to get in touch with Level 9 Services. Level9services.com is the best way to get a hold of us. Well, I greatly appreciate all you do for not only yes. making our lives easier, right. but also, too, giving back to veterans yes. and our public service. So Absolutely. Thank you for having us, Thanks for having us. With Veterans Day taking place each year on November 11th, this month is the perfect time to show our appreciation and to thank all of the brave men and women who served our country and put their lives in the line to protect our freedoms. Having family in the military, my heart goes out to those who sacrificed so greatly, along with their families, so that we can live free and pursue our dreams here in the United States of America. Organizations like Military Warrior Support Foundation and Retrieving Freedom are not only giving back and serving our veterans, but making it easy for us to do so as well. With their academic and employment assistance, mentoring, family and recreational activities, and their 100% mortgage-free homes, Military Warrior Support Foundation is changing the lives of our nation's combat wounded heroes and the lives of their spouses, kids, and grandkids too. Retrieving Freedom is changing lives by training service dogs to work with veterans and individuals with autism and diabetes. And companies like Level 9 Services are employing our veterans while helping us with day-to-day -day tasks and projects so that we can spend more time with our families. Thank you again to all of our veterans and thank you for watching The Spark. To learn more about each of the guests and to share your stories of others leading by example, visit WKNO.org and click on the link for The Spark. We look forward to seeing you next month and we hope that you'll join us in creating a spark for the Mid-South. Just like having the right information is necessary to make solid hiring and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. Datafax is proud to support the positives and be a presenting sponsor of The Spark. Since 1964, Memphis Theological Seminary has worked to equip men and women of all races and faiths with The Spark to do ministry for the real world. We're grateful to serve our community and proud to support WKNO. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance has been serving the Mid-South since 1954. We've always focused on supporting our community and believe in promoting the positives, encouraging engagement, and leading by example. Lipscomb and Pitts is proud to be a presenting sponsor of The Spark.